thanks for joining me today. I was, I've been thinking about this for a very long time now, and I wanted to get it out on on either down on paper or out on video. What I decided to do, I was going to put it on video. I was going to upload it to YouTube. So I want you to watch this thing to the entirety uh, of it, and I want you to dwell on this because dwelling on God's word is important. And this is what we should be doing anyway. So it, this morning, I want to take a look at Ephesians chapter 6. I'll give you a second. Okay, good enough. You can hit pause if you need to. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when that day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit in all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Now, I'm sure that if you're familiar with the Bible at all, you're familiar with the armor of God. Okay, you, you've got uh, you've got the belt of truth, you've got the breastplate of righteousness, you got your uh, shoes fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. By the way, if you take a look in Romans chapter ten. It says, how beautiful are the feet of the ones who bring the good news. You're preaching the gospel of peace there when you've put on the armor of God. But I, that's not where I'm headed today. I'm headed towards somewhere else. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith to be able to extinguish the flaming arrows for, of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation. Protect your mind on that and the sword of the spirit. What is the sword of the Spirit? The sword of the Spirit, he says right afterwards, he says, is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit in all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the saints. Now, what I want to talk about is the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Lord. Uh, back when I was growing up, we did sword drills. And and that was when we, we took our Bibles and we raised them up in the air. And the Sunday school teacher shouted out a, a chapter and verse. And the first one down and had their Bible open to that won the sword drill. Because it was important to know your sword. You know, just like in days past before guns became the go-to weapon. Swords were the weapon of of choice of opportunity of defense that is what people used to defend themselves in battle was the sword they worked it they sharpened it they they made sure it was hardened metal because you don't want soft metal because that's going to that's going to dent and that's going to bend and that's going to break you don't want it dull because you can't cut very well with a dull sword. You need to have a sharp sword. But then I got to thinking about, you know, today's progressive, progressive agenda. And I want you to know this right now, friend. I'm not talking bad about people, but the devil is hard at work in the churches and in Christians' lives. What he is doing, 
He is trying his hardest to get the sword of the Spirit dulled down. And how does he do that? He does that because he knows that a dull sword in battle isn't going to be worth diddly squat. Okay. And he does that by questioning God's authority on several occasions and in several places. Um, the first one that comes to my mind is in Genesis. When it says in Genesis chapter 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. He said this and it goes on to explain what he did in six days uh, uh, there was a morning, there was an evening, there was there was a 24-hour time span, there was day and there was night, and there is no question about what the context of the scripture says about it being 24-hour, literal six days, and then he rested on the seventh. Okay, if you don't believe me, look at Exodus chapter 20 when he gives the Ten Commandments. He says, you shall work for six days and rest on the seventh because that's what I did. But Satan is working so hard to, to dull down the sword of the Spirit. He says, well, God really didn't. God really didn't. He, did, he didn't say that it was six literal days or that it had to be six literal days. He did, actually. He did. And it's important that it was six literal days because at the end of those days, it was all very good what he had created. You can't have millions of years because if you have millions of years in that time span of creation, then you know what you have? You have millions and millions of years of death plaguing the world. And death is not some unnatural thing brought about by sin and the curse, but death is just a natural part of creation if the millions of years holds true. But it's got to be six literal days this is area one where where the devil is just doling down the scriptures or at least attempting to because the scriptures still speak the truth it is just a matter of what you believe about them now i want to show you something can you see this Looks like a sword, doesn't it? I built this for my son. Woo! This is out of just a piece of one by. One by four, actually. Pine, soft pine. And then I painted it to look good. And it, so it looks like a sword. And you can swing it like a sword. But you know what? It's not a sword. And if you look at the edge here, I mean, you look at it from the side, it looks good. So look at that leading edge right there. That thing would not do anything in battle. I mean, sure, you could knock a few people around, but that thing's going to break. Thing's going to splinter apart. You certainly couldn't slice anything. And, uh, Without being able to slice anything, your sword is pretty well useless. I mean, I could take a real sword and I could cut something with it. This, I'm, I'm just going to bludgeon to death, really. Follow me, if you will. You're in, you're in Ephesians. Follow me up to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. 
Maybe I should read that again. For the word of the Lord is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, you know, it's not surprising that Paul told us in Ephesians to pick up the sword of the Spirit. We got the sword of the Spirit going on, but you know what? When we trust Satan over God, we we just dull down the edges. Where it's not harmful at all. My kid is six years old and I let him play with this. You know why? Because I know it won't hurt him. Because it's garbage. You know. If we let the word of God speak what it really says, we would be fearful of what it says. Don't believe me? Look on in, in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, we're talking about Genesis here and how the devil is just trying to literally destroy what the passage says. Now, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen is was made out of, excuse me, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. That was, that's what we call ex nihilio. Okay? Out of nothing, God's command. The words that came out of his mouth. You've heard that uh, video clip. I don't even know what movie it's from. But it says, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? If we understood the words that come out of God's mouth, we would know that God has a creative force in his very speech. And that he made the earth. He made the stars. He made the sun. He made the trees. He made the plants. He made you and he made me out of his voice. There is power in our God. If we would just let the scriptures speak, we wouldn't be playing with some stupid wooden sword. We'd be playing with a really sharp sword. And you know what we'd do? We'd be better off with that because we would know how dangerous it is to yield. To wield. To wield. We need to wield. This is the first draft. I might not... No, I might not publish this. We need to quit playing with a wooden sword that looks like the Word of God. We need to quit playing with some kind of recreation that isn't the real thing. We need to take up the real sword of the Spirit. So that we... So that we can split and divide down to the joints and marrow, down to the soul and the spirit. I want you to think about those passages today. When you grab up your full armor of God, what are you grabbing? Are you grabbing up a sword? Are you grabbing up what looks like a, a mock-up of a sword? These are things to think about. I got a jet to work. Have a blessed day. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.